few weeks, I spoke with Senator Rubio about a variety of topics, including the tough year so far in America financially. It's going to get worse, unfortunately, because we're going to have a major uh, supply chain disruption coming out of Shanghai. You know, China's been shut down because we've had this catastrophe with COVID over there. Look, it's a combination of things. I think number one is that it really comes down to the very basics that we learn in economics of supply and demand. We've had a shortage of supply because of COVID disruptions in the case of oil and gas because of a war and also because of domestic decisions that have been made by this administration and an increase in supply particularly when you pump a bunch of money into the economy, like $1.9 trillion, the way uh, Biden did last March when the Democrats passed that bill. So it's very simple. If you have less supply and more demand, the prices go up dramatically. And that's what we're seeing across the board. Number one is fuel prices, right? Because the fuel prices go up on jet fuel, on diesel, on everything. The price of everything else goes up. Everything's transported using those fuels. And, and, and there, the supply uh, you know, has been made worse by uh, the decisions of this administration to wage war against fossil fuels. They're telling banks not to lend money to oil exploration deals. And who's going to go into that business today when you have an administration that's openly hostile to it? Meanwhile, they pumped $1.9 trillion and really would have pumped 3 or $4 trillion into the economy had it not been for Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. So the administration has made inflation worse, and they really don't have any answer for how to get us out of it. And now what you worry about is, is uh, deflation. Now what you worry about, frankly, is stagnation and a potential recession. Is that part of what we're seeing in the stock market? Clearly, uh, it's been a rough 2022 when you look at that broad picture. Well, there's two things happening with the stock market. The first is that once inflation begins to climb this high, they have to raise interest rates to slow down the economy. And that's a very blunt tool. When you raise interest rates, it's makes more sense to put your money in interest-bearing accounts and less sense to keep it at risk in the stock market. So that's number one. Number two is a lot of these companies around there are beginning to underperform. They're beginning to underperform because of inflation. There comes a point where the prices for them and the costs are too high. Maybe they don't even have supply to make sales. And so uh, they can only raise prices to a certain point. They're also, you know, you're an airline as an example. Your fuel prices are very high and your future for travel is uncertain. So I think that's what you're seeing with the stock market. I don't judge the health of our economy by the stock market, but it is a factor in, the, in, in our economy because there are a lot of people at retirement or nearing retirement who are going to depend on the stock market for, for their retirement income. And, and that's unfortunately when taking a big hit right now, and it's going to hurt a lot of people who are planning to retire or are retired. When we've talked national security in the past, we've talked about border security. How do you feel about what's happened even recently at the southern border because the Biden administration had removed uh, some policy and now that's back in effect because of a court order? It could be gone at any time. All they need is for a judge to say that it's okay to take it away. First of all, I think it exposes hypocrisy. I pointed it out last week in a hearing. I asked Fauci about this. If you're an American citizen who's going to travel abroad this summer to any country in the world, in order for you to come back to your own country, an American citizen, you have to take the COVID test to enter the United States. Um, on the other hand, if you come here illegally, you don't have to take a COVID test to enter the United States. But bigger than that is there is no border security. The fact of the matter is if you cross illegally the U.S.-Mexico border, present yourself to border authorities and say the magic words that trigger asylum, your chances of remaining in the United States pending a hearing three or four years from now that you probably won't show up for are extremely high. And people know that. So more people are coming. Now, there are still people being removed because of Title 42. If you take away Title 42, over 90% of the people who cross the border will be able to stay. Uh, that's the plan the Biden administration has. Word has gotten out. And so we have hundreds of thousands of people headed here or poised to enter, less than a day away from the border just waiting for that order to be lifted to cross the border. I think we're going to have a very tough summer, uh, it's already a border that's been overrun because of the Biden administration. They've, they've incentivized this, they've encouraged it, and frankly, the, the, they're inviting people to do this. I saw this week that uh, you had uh, earned an endorsement from the Florida Police Benevolent Association. This seems like a, an area where a former law enforcement chief of police, Val Demings, would get those kind of endorsements instead. Why do you feel like you're getting law enforcement support? Well, first of all, I have almost uh, every sheriff in Florida has endorsed me. The, the Florida Sheriff's Association, the Florida Police Chiefs have endorsed me. And now the, the, the largest police union have endorsed me. And it's pretty simple. I've always been on the side of law enforcement. And what's worse for them is that Val Demings was a police chief. She was a police officer. She should know better. I mean, in 2020, when she wanted to be picked as Joe Biden's vice president, she was out there actively campaigning for vice president. She went on, she wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post, basically chastising law enforcement. 
She had interviews on television talking about how systemic racism was deeply embedded in police departments across the country. She called the Minneapolis effort to defund the police a very thoughtful proposal. She did all that because she wanted to be picked as a vice president and her party is controlled by radical leftists and she wanted to fit in. So for someone from law enforcement to use the supposed credibility that your service in law enforcement gives you, as is the case with Val Deming, to use that platform to attack law enforcement the way she did, it's even worse than someone who doesn't even have that background and believes in these crazy things. So they know that if she ever made it to the Senate, she would not be on their side. She would do whatever the left tells her to do. I have a history and a record of supporting law enforcement. And that's why not only do I have all those endorsements, but I think you'll continue to see these strong law enforcement endorsements. Senator, you just said, uh, uh, seemingly saying it's a negative that uh, Congresswoman Demings votes with her party. Don't you vote with Republican Party leadership? Sure. But I, I voted, she voted with Pelosi 100% of the time. I haven't voted with McConnell 100% of the time. Uh, there's been times when I voted differently from what the preferred position of, uh, of President Trump was in that regard. But see, I'm in a party that allows you to do that. She's in a party that doesn't. In the Democratic Party, if you, it doesn't matter what you personally believe. You have to follow the line of the most radical elements in that party. And if you don't, then they come after you like they've done Kirsten Sinema in Arizona, like they've tried to do to Joe Manchin, and they try to demonize and destroy you. In my party, we have people that vote differently all the time. And we move on to the next issue because we allow for those differences of opinion. So I, she's voted with Pelosi 100% of the time, and she gets to the Senate, she'll vote with Schumer 100% of the time. It doesn't matter what she believes. Whatever he tells her she needs to do, that's what she's going to fall in line and do because that's what her record is in. Senator Rubio told me that he believes Roe versus Wade was bad law, that there's no constitutional right to an abortion. Mr. Rubio spoke to us in response to an interview we did with Representative Val Demings. Demings running for Senate, and she is the favorite in the Democratic primary taking place next month. You can see my interview with Demings online. Search newsforjax.com with the keywords This Week in Jacksonville and Val Demings. All right, next on.